Welcome to Reread. Finally, I am getting into Bantam books. This is The Truce of Bakora. Oh man, oh man. It's been so long and it's so good to read a Bantam novel. You don't, Bantam novels feel like a comfortable pair of jeans to me. They just feel like home. And to me, nothing screams, you know, classic EU like a Bantam novel. And I was not, in fact, I'm more impressed with this reading it a second time than probably I was the first time. Uh, just to kind of break it down, they intercept a distress call. You know, it happens the day after the Return of the Jedi. Luke is injured, and he stays injured for a while. At first, I thought he was sore because of you know the the Emperor shot him up with a bunch of volts of electricity. But he stays injured <clears throat> basically throughout the whole book, on and off, mainly because of his injuries from Return of the Jedi. But then later on, he sustains more injuries too that kind of puts him out. But I, I didn't realize he was out for so long. Also, Leia they say, is still recovering from her shoulder. She got shot in the shoulder. And I was like, oh yeah, so she's going through a hard time as well. Um, it's funny because Leia calls 3PO Goldenrod once. She went, did Goldenrod figure it out? And basically, she's in love with Han, so she's using that pet name that Han uses. But she only uses it once in the book, and then after that, she calls him 3PO. Uh, all the characters here are written very well. Uh, Dev is the person who's with the Ciceruk. He's a 15-year-old boy who has the Force, who basically can calm people down and make them feel like they want to be, I think it's called intensed, intact, intact, into the, you know, it takes out their life essence and puts it into machines, which I know is weird, but we've seen this happen before in the expanded universe, so I don't really mind it. Um, but anyway, he's the one that kind of calms them down and says, no, you should be happy. Like, he wishes he gets downloaded into a battleship because he wants to fly into the skies in a battleship. <clears throat> you know, that's what he wants to live with, without sleep, without need of food or sickness or anything. He thinks it's so great. Well, later on, you find out that he's just being brainwashed. And it washes off every couple of days or a week or so. So there's Blue... I think his name is just Blue Scale. And it's a blue uh, Ciceruk who is basically has one eye that can hypnotize him in and when he gets his re-education or what refreshing I think is what it's called uh, he he is in love with the Ciceruk again he worships them and then <clears throat> later on he starts getting angry because he realizes wait a minute they killed my mom they dad my, they killed everyone they killed my whole family and, and my planet um, but anyway Leia makes a joke uh, that no or Han or I can't remember someone made a joke and they said it's it ain't it ain't straight out. It doesn't look like it's straight out of the Kraken's Field Guide, but it's something. All right, Kraken's Field Guide. Remember, a lot of the um, authors back then got a big stack per George Lucas of Westing Games material. You know, just kind of use if they needed to use a vehicle or a weapon or something. They had these books as reference. She probably got a copy of Kraken's uh, Field Guide and said, yeah, "I'm going to throw this joke in there," which I thought was really good. Uh, Leia sees Anakin Skywalker. I did remember this, but I didn't remember how good the scene was. He's coming to say he's sorry. You know, he's sorry for what he did. And she's like, are you going to apologize to Han too? He went, well, I can't appear before Han, but yeah, tell him I'm sorry too, which I thought was kind of fun. Uh, and then tell Luke this. She went, why, why can't you tell him? She went, because I want to, he said, I, I can't, I won't be here that long. I can't appear. For whatever reason, <clears throat> his ghost can't appear that much. So he's appearing in front of her just to give the message to Luke. And Luke's kind of hurt when he realizes that, you know, because he sees, he says, well, Leia, I saw him on Endor, but he didn't speak to me. He spoke to you? What did he say? You know, Luke's like, wow, I wish I would have seen Anakin Skywalker. And it's a really good scene. And I, and I started thinking, I'm so glad they didn't abuse this. Like, just start throwing Anakin uh, Skywalker in the first couple of books, you know, because he can, now he's a Force Ghost too, and he's dancing with Obi-Wan, and Yoda's now a Force Ghost, and now Yoda appears. They don't really abuse that. In the books, in fact, they rarely use it. But the scene with uh, and then and Leia hates Anakin Scott. Still calls him Darth Vader. Is not used to calling him Anakin Skywalker. But Anakin goes, well, if you say you're sorry, I'll 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 still be with you. I mean, you may not be able to see me anymore. He said, but I'll always be with you. I'll be watching. And she, you know, later on, she's getting mad at something. She shakes her fist when she thinks about him up in the air, wherever he's at. I still hate him. Tells Luke she has a problem with being the, you know, processing all the being the daughter of Darth Vader and wants to keep it a secret. Right now, it's a secret between the three of them. Uh, she, Luke, and uh, Han are keeping it a secret, which was really good. I really like that. Um, <clears throat> Obi Wan also appears to Luke at the beginning, which is nice. They don't really overdo. Uh, 
Obi-Wan Kenobi either in his Force appearances too, which I love. But he gives him information at the very beginning and then just kind of disappears. And when Luke calls out for him for more help, Ben can't be there. I like it because he can't be there to help Luke. Luke has got to walk through this journey and discover things on his own. And I think that's awesome. You got Gariel Capsison, who is Luke's first love. Now he says, you know, kind of being in love with Leia, but realizing it's his sister, he's still got a, a lonely heart. And Gariel is very beautiful. She comes from an era where she's told not to trust Jedi. The Jedi were the reason the, the Empire had to, you know, it's almost in line with the prequels. Jedi are, you know, they got too much power. They got big, you know, too big for their britches. And the Empire's here to restore order. The Empire on Bakura isn't necessarily a bad thing. They feel like, I mean, they do fear them because the Empire rules by fear. But they also think, well, we've been under their protection. They've been fighting off the Cicero for us for a while now. I mean, sure, they're needing help now, but they're our protectors. So they're not really, the even though they don't respect the Imperial governor who's there, but it's like, eh, do we want to jump to the Alliance? Not really, because the Empire has been kind of, you know, nice. And the Empire, of course, grudgingly accepts them, their help, and they don't believe that the Emperor's dead because they haven't received communication, but that could be just a rebel lie. And I, and I like that. You shouldn't just go ahead. It's, it's, it's all about trust. The whole time, uh, both parties are having trouble trusting each other. And I liked that. I, I'm like, I'm telling you, this book is pretty well written, be better than I remembered. Um, they find out that, uh, anyway, let me just go, I'm just going to go ahead and talk about Luke's love. So, of course, he's attracted to her, him. She's attracted, <clears throat> I mean, she's attracted to him. He's attracted to her. But in the end, of course, she has to stay with her people. She can't leave. And Luke understands that they're just going to be just friends. He got put in the friend zone. Oh, no. Leia's like, come on, Luke, go get him. You know, get her done. I wish Leia would have said that, but she doesn't. Uh, anyway, 3PO is written great because guess what he has to do? He has to translate an unknown alien species, ra another race's dialect. He's doing his prime function. I don't think 3PO gets utilized like that at all in the EU. I mean, I'm sure there's a few times here and there he gets used as a translator, but he is key to breaking their code so that they can start understanding the transmissions, the Cicerook, because they're not hiding their transmissions because they know they, they deal in clicks and whistles and stuff and, you know, a bunch of whistles and stuff and music, and no one can understand what they're saying. Neither can 3PO at first, <clears throat> but R2 can mimic them. So R2 starts talking, and Leia goes, whoa, that sounded just like the Sith, I mean, the Cicero recording. She went, can you talk just like them? And 3 goes, well, actually, that fourth, fourth wood was uh, one octave higher than it should have been. And uh, R2 gives him a raspberry and says something. He's like, really, R2? He said, there's no need for that language. I love it. I love it. I love that dialogue. And I love that 3PO has something to do, his primary function uncover what the you know what the secret what this dialect is so that he can translate and when he does he uncovers something that we knew as the reader but they don't know is that the Cicerook, uh dev reaches out with the force he feels luke he tries to hide that from the Cicerook, but once he gets brainwashed again the Cicerook know there's something he's keeping from him and when he gets brainwashed again he gladly shares it with him that luke a big force user is on there well they like force users you know, so the bigger the force user, the more they can, the easier they can c capture humans. And they, the reason they use humans over any other alien species is because humans tend to power their ships longer for a longer time. So it's a better battery in a way. But so they're going after Luke Skywalker. And so they contact the governor on the planet and say, look, we'll leave you alone. And Dev is basically the interpreter, but he is, we'll leave you alone if you give us Luke Skywalker. The governor is kind of wicked. He's like, I'll give you Luke Skywalker, but he puts a, a worm infestation. He, he lets Skywalker and Gary come over to eat, <clears throat> and Skywalker's eating some food. Gary takes a bite, too, of Luke's food for some reason. I can't remember why. But uh, later on, Gary has a worm inside of her, a parasite, and the governor gets it out of her and says, yeah, you uh, unfortunately, you ate one of the eggs by accident, but it's okay. Luke Skywalker just ate two. So, and, and they, when they, they fester inside you, then they break out and then they can infect other people too. So there's just big infection. They're, they're very infectious. And he said, that, how, that way we'll kill off all the Cicerook. You know, so that, that's his evil scheme. And of course, the whole time Luke is trying to fight, he realizes something's wrong after a while while he's coughing up blood. There's two parasites. He uses the force to kind of get their minds and bring them up to the front. 
<clears throat> and then gets them close enough to his throat so we can cough them out, spit them out. And then Leia looks at him. They're like green with these black stripes on them and they're hissing at her or something. They, they, they sound disgusting. And she squashes them with her foot. So they're not, you know, he's cured. But he's still injured again. His lungs, he's very hoarse. He can't talk. <coughs> um, Thanus, Peter, Thanus, who is the leader of the Imperials, is a really good character. Awesome character. Um, not quite Peleon, because, but he does the right thing. He, he got reassigned to this dead-end planet because he bucked a, a, a command. He was, they were enslaving the Tals, and he fell into some kind of pit and would have died, but the Tal slaver saved him. So in return, he made sure they kept fed. And when they weren't getting fed, you know, he kind of bucked the trend there and kind of bucked upper management a little bit, got in a little trouble for it, and was demoted and sent to Bakora, where he will never be promoted again. So he's kind of stuck in a dead-end career. And when... You know, Luke, Luke, Leia, and Han, eventually when they get up the Cicerook, of course the Empire is going to betray them. But they cripple the cruiser that uh, Thanos is in. He offers a surrender. Lets every, you know, the Lats agrees to let all the Imperials off the planet and go to a neutral spot where the em Empire can pick them back up. But anyone who wants to, you know, mutiny can. He goes, I'm not going to tell my people that. I'm not going to tell them if you want to jump ship, you can. And so as they're all loading up on the last one, the second command goes, Sir, are you coming? He went, No, I'm staying. And he's jumping to the Alliance. He, he tenders his thing to the Alliance. And so it's kind of a shock. But he figures, you know what? This is the right thing to do. And my career in the Empire is dead. Again, really good character. Really enjoyed Thanos. And now that I think about it, I think Thanos joins the Bakoran planet. Maybe. I can't remember. He, he, does, he does jump ship. But he's going to stay on Bakora, I think, and help the home planet. Either way, uh, oh, it's also mentioned that the Cicerook, it was just a scouting party. That huge armada, that's just a scouting party. There's more of them. So the threat's still out there. What's going to happen to them? Well, we won't find out till like 20 years later, which is awesome when we find it out. But the whole time I'm reading, I'm like, this is a solid book. I mean, it's really good. It keeps you engaged. Uh, 3PO has been used excellently in this. And it, it's got a little bit, it sprinkles a little bit of humor in it. And it's it's a solid, I mean, not, not a top 10 book, but definitely in the upper echelon of Star Wars novels. I, I, I'm just more impressed than I was before. Like I said, seeing Obi-Wan a little bit, seeing Anakin Skywalker in it, that's really cool. And the conversations, the dialogue, it feels, the it feels in line with their characters and their story arc. So overall, I love Truce of Bakura. It is well worth your time. All right, folks, that's it for now. See you later.